Today is Sunday, November twenty eighth, uh, twenty twenty one. Uh, we have two days left before we enter the final month of this year. Uh, today I visited Mon Montpellier in Montpellier Cafe in Jeonju, and uh, then I returned home and uh, helped out, helped with my. Helped my colleagues making a chicken coop. Uh, today, interestingly, I got a, a long uh, article from TC Copy Pro. Uh, he is uh, the guy is very intelligent, and he's very avid about correcting Konglish or Kore uh, Koreanized English, which is wrong, uh, and uh, he is helping. A Korean people uh, to learn correct English and make sense of English. Uh, today he has a very interesting article, not related to the correct English, but a uh, uh, Korean viewpoint or Korean attitude towards Americans or native English speakers living in Korea. Let's check out what he has to say. Uh, I've never read this article before, but here we go. November 28th, 2021. Demizak copy fails, copywriting, grammar, proofreading. Is holding non-native speakers to a higher standard than native speakers unfair? Hmm. I'm a non-native speaker. But uh, is is holding non-native speakers like me to a higher standard than native speakers unfair? Well, personally, I think it is unfair. And um, uh, I th I don't know. I think it's a mood uh mood point. Uh, and I have not much significant input about this issue, but nonetheless, this question is kind of disputable. Let's see uh, what the uh, uh, writer is trying to say, what's his intention. Once is a mistake, but more than one is bordering on carelessness. A constant nagging question, was that error a typo or ignorance? Less than fluent English can make people think twice about doing business with you. Mistakes affect your perceived authority. I agree. Too many errors can destroy it immediately. What steps can you take? Okay, let me go over these five sub-questions one more time. Once is a mistake, but more than one is bordering on carelessness. I agree. A constant nagging question is, was that error a typo or ignorance? Yeah, I think 80% of mis uh, English mistakes Koreans make uh, is out of ignorance, and 20% out of typo. Less than fluent English can make people think twice about doing business with you. I agree. That's why I, uh, I outstand among other Koreans. Mistakes affect your perceived authority. Too many errors can destroy it immediately. Definitely. What steps can you take? Maybe study more? Study hard, honing on English. As an English copywriter, proofreader, and a former EFL instructor, wow, I constantly evaluate written English. It's not something I consciously do. It's something I can't turn off. I think you have similar mindset as, uh, as I do. Uh, and I don't know, I'm not a, 
a perfectionist, uh, but I'm close to it, and I feel you are too. Just today, I was reading reading a site to get information on a task for one of my clients. A typo jumped out at me. The author had written, "Which is more persuasive, a friend recommending you buy their favorite product? What the heck is that? What is more persuasive, a friend recommending you to their favorite product? Maybe it's closer. Spot the mistake. Yeah, it should be buy." Oh, okay. Their favorite product. A friend recommending you buy their favorite product. I brushed it off. I brushed it off. Yeah. Ah,、uh, I remind you this. My this. The reason I am reading this article is that it's part of my daily English reading. I try to read one article, ah,、uh, each day. To keep up with my English, to hone in on my English. So、uh, today, this is the my my article. Brushed it off, brushed it off, brushed it off. That's good expression to remember. Brush. Yeah, I know these expressions all along. It's just that I want to remind myself of good expressions. I don't know when I hit like age sixty, seventy, eighty, as I am a, a, a non-native speaker and who only travel to America as a tourist for like a one-week vacation.、Uh, I, I am less exposed to、uh, English-speaking environment, so that's why I need to remind myself. Of good expressions, I need. I try to memorize all those good expressions, so I just jotted it down, brushed it off on my、uh, notebook. Everyone makes mistakes. I've admitted to several errors in my writing, and that's despite the vigorous proofreading. Vigorous, vigorous proofreading. Bye. And I may be in the minority, but I am. I am grateful when my readers point out my typos. It's not that I like people pointing out my mistakes. I don't think anyone likes that. Yeah, but when people point out errors in my posts, that means one, someone's actually reading what I've written. Two. I have an opportunity to remove a mistake from my page and increase my authority. Well, not necessarily, but you have a point there. If we have less mistakes, then we can be、uh, seen as authoritative. Yeah,、uh, we would increase our integrity. Uh, kind of, we project ourselves、uh, to people as someone、uh, intelligent, sincere, perfect. Either way, it's a win-win situation. It's a win-win situation. It's a win-win situation. So I left a comment on that article, pointing out the typo. No sarcasm, no snarky judgment. Ah,、uh, no snarky, no snarky judgment. Like a snobby or uh, uh, pricking, uh, pointing out or you know, pinching judgment. Just letting the author know they had a typo to fix. One is a mistake, but more than one is bordering on carelessness. But then, near the end of the article, I found another glaring error. 
Another, I found another glaring, glaring error. Yeah, glaring mistake, glaring hearing by the uh, senators, glaring error. The first one may have slipped by a spell checker, but not this one. A.K. those clients for referrals. What is A.K.? Ask those clients for referrals. Okay. I'm sure you figured it out. Figured out it should be ask those clients for referrals. A.K. wouldn't slip by a spell checker. Especially if you follow my suggestion to use your built-in spell checker and Grammarly. Yeah, they advertise a lot on YouTube, Grammarly. Uh, recently, the one black woman wore a Squid Game uh, training clothes and mentioned about uh, learning English like a, a survival game as in the Squid Game. But with that second error, three things happened. One, I wrote another comment pointing out the second typo. Two, I started to doubt if the author was an authority on the topic covered in the post. Three, I began to wonder if English was their native language. I started looking at the writing from a different perspective. I looked for awkward phrases and word choices. Awkward phrases and word choices. Awkward, 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 awkward word choices. I hunted for more typos and errors, glaring errors. I didn't find any, and my brief research into the author of the piece indicated he's a native English speaker. An English native speaker that needs to proofread a little more. But those two minor errors in a roughly 1,000 word post did two things. One, it made me doubt their authority. Two, it distracted me from the message of the post. Yeah. There's an exact proverb or adage in Korean that we, we just clear over, gloss over the details. I mean, we gloss over the uh, big picture by just you know, like a counting beans, bean counting, uh, crashing numbers. Chuma uh, kansan. Chuma means... Ju, jo, jo ma, kan shan in Chinese. Chuma means riding a horse in the mountains, in the forest. Kan san, you glass over the mountains. Since you are just meandering or just driving your horse, riding your horse in the mountain trails, you forget how the mountains shape that you went through. You just gloss over the big picture by focusing on the more details. So uh, it distracted me from the message of the past because we just pinpointed at the details. We forgot the whole picture. Since there were too many mistakes, typos, it distracted us from the message the post was trying to convey to us. Last week, I wrote about how poor copy destroys trust. It happens with the people writing in their native language. Imagine how much worse it is when writing in a foreign language. Fair or not, Non-native speakers are judged more harshly than native speakers. Fair or not, fair or not, fair or not, fair or not. That's good expression. Fair or not. 
Non-native speakers are judged more harshly than native speakers. I agree. You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree on whether it's right or not, but you have to accept it. If you ignore it, it will only harm you. A constant nagging question, was that error a typo or ignorance? When a native speaker makes a mistake, it was a typo. That's the assumption 99.99% of the time. In the first example above, it's easy to see how someone could have omitted the U in by. The author more than likely knows the difference between by and by. But as a non-native English speaker, I found many Americans make a mistake by using by in the place for B-U-Y. What about the non-native speaker? If a non-native speaker makes the same mistake, was it a typo or lack of grammar knowledge? It could be either. But because we are talking about a non-native speaker, the chances that it's the latter are greater. <laughs> When I make a mistake in my writing, it's a typo, a brain fart, <laughs> a brain fart. Yeah, Americans are, are quite picky, or they're very concerned about farting. In Asia, we just fart. Yeah, we just, we try to be careful when we are about to fart in the office, we just go out and fart in the corridor, or in the toilet, but uh, yeah, brain fart. I know better, but either due to carelessness or lack of time, I made a mistake. Oops, as they say, shit happens. But when a non-native speaker makes mistake, was it the same careless typo or was it a mistake they made because their language level wasn't sufficient? Most of the time when non-native speakers make mistakes in written form, it is assumed they didn't know the rules. There are lots of na native English speakers who make mistakes because they don't know the rules. Spend time online and you will see native speakers making mistakes with a tutu, they're there or could have or could have or there, or then, or then, then, or then. But these are not the kinds of mistakes that non-native speakers make. Uh, they make mistakes with verb tenses, propositions, prepositions, and articles. When people see these errors, it's assumed a non-native speaker made them. So why does that matter? Less than fluent English can make people think twice about doing business with you. Once they figure out you are not a na native speaker, people may have reservations about doing business with you. Not because of racial or cultural bias, though I'm sure that unfortunately does happen. It's for the same reason I often have difficulty getting a taxi in Seoul. Really? Anticipated communication problems. Taxi drivers usually prefer to pick up Korean passengers. Why? Because they expect it will be much easier to communicate. Seeing by big, hairy, white face, Tax drivers quickly identify me as a foreigner. They assume it's going to be harder to communicate with, her, with me. I am by no means fluent, but I have no problem telling taxi drivers where I want to go. But they don't know that. And the person viewing your website does know how well you can communicate in English. But 
they're making the same assumption as the taxi driver. The taxi driver is making an assumption based on past experiences. He, she has picked up several foreign passengers, each with varying degrees of Korean language ability. The majority likely struggle with Korean, or at least Korean pronunciation. It's added stress for the cab driver trying to determine their destination. With a native Korean speaking fare, it would be a piece of cake. A piece of cake. With a native Korean speaking fare, native Korean speaking fare, it would be a piece of cake. If potential customers have had any interactions with non-native speakers involving communication problems, they assume the same thing will happen with you. But like I have no problems once in a Korean cab, you may have no trouble communicating in English. The trick is to get over that first bump, hump. Once we establish a relationship with someone, we tend to work together to resolve issues. But if you never establish that relationship, you make it harder on yourself to get to that stage. Mistakes affect your perceived authority. Too many errors can destroy it immediately. I started to doubt the author's authority from the site I mentioned earlier. Likewise, errors will decrease your perceived authority. When, if, even if you are a leader in your field, think about your own experiences. How did you feel in class when a teacher or professor said something you knew was incorrect? Ooh, teacher. Uh, you immediately started to question what else they were wrong about. Everything else, 주막한산, everything else they told you could have been entirely true, but that one errant statement planted seeds of doubt. Planted seeds of doubt. That's a good expression. Planted Seeds of doubt. About everything they'd taught you. You likely wouldn't discount everything they'd taught. But you'd probably want to re-examine some points that had come up in class. Things you'd initially accepted even though they seemed far-fetched. After all, they are the authority. They must be more knowledgeable than me. This person... What? The I was thinking about uh, my work tomorrow. Let me read this phrase one more time. Uh, paragraph. You likely wouldn't discount everything they would taught but you'd probably want to re-examine some points that had come up in class. Things you'd initially accepted, even though they seemed far-fetched. Far-fetched. That's another good word, far-fetched. What Trump said all along is far-fetched. After all, they are the authority. They must be more knowledgeable than me. These preconceptions may not be fair, but they exist. Hopefully, they will change over time, but we still need to be aware of them. I also hope that native and non-native speakers will take the time to proofread their work. I agree. There's nothing Wrong with doing a good job. Being grammat grammatically correct is never a bad thing. I can't think of any instance 
where someone's authority on a subject took a hit because their writing was error-free. What steps error-free? Error-free. Error-free. Proofreading. Full proof. What steps can you take? First of all, use a native English copywriter or proofreader to write or edit your website or emails. Remember the、uh, importance of establishing that client relationship. Once established, it's much easier to work together. But you've got to get over that first hump first. Take a look into world of interior designer and stylist Brady Tolbert. I keep saying new clients form their first impression of your business based on their first contact. That's usually in the form of your website, a blog post, or an email. Give yourself the best chance for success with error-free. Natural sounding copy. If you think I could be of help to you, fill out the form below to explore your options. Follow up. I must give credit. Give credit. That's good expression. Yeah, I drank a bottle. I don't know, like a. I drank several shots of Hansan Sogo juice. It's a sixteen percent proof. So I guess like I drank like three bottles of beer tonight. That's equivalent of what I drank. A follow up. I must give credit to the author of the piece I referenced at the beginning of this post. He corrected the typos in the article I checked, and once no longer distracted by typos, I absorbed the information in the post. And found it quite helpful. Also, much to my surprise, both Grammarly and the spell checker in Google Docs missed a k. Really, Grammarly helps you、uh, perfect your writing. That's what the Grammarly always advertises on YouTube. Grammarly and the spell checker in Google Docs. Yeah, spell checker, spell checker. That's another good word. Spell checker in the Google Docs. Missed a k, ak, maybe ak. Neither one picked up on a friend recommending you buy their favorite product either. Yeah, a friend recommending you buy their favorite product. Um. Yeah, recommending you buy their favorite product. Uh, context-wise, gibberish. A little bit unorthodox, but、uh, grammarly it's、uh, quite complete. I think. But、uh, that's the interesting article. Uh, from. Or by TC Pro,、uh, he lives. He lives in Seoul,、uh, but he can be found on Facebook. He is quite active about pointing out typos,、uh, Konglish, or other ungrammarly expressions that、uh, Koreans make.、Uh, he corrects all the mistakes to our help. He's a good guy. I I've never met him before, but he looks quite young, in his I don't know late thirties, early forties, and、uh, I believe he lived in Korea for many many years. Uh, I wish he his business of proofreading, correcting. Uh, or copywriting, or some other English ESL tutoring、uh, businesses, and probably he—I don't know—he's、uh, 
he would be a good English teacher. Uh, but before I close the article down for the day, uh, let me go over the expressions that I remembered or encountered and that made impressions on my mind. Error-free, glaring errors, glaring mistakes, uh, far-fetched, far far fetched brain fart a brain fart what else there gotta be some expression that starts with as smooth smarter smooch what is it i brushed it off it's a a win win situation right win win strategy situation no snarky judgment what is a snarky yeah that's good i've never heard of the expression i think maybe i read it before but snarky like a painful dirty if you are a snarky you say something in a sarcastic or snide way usually because you are irritated but also sometimes to be funny I was asking you a serious question. There's no reason to be snarky with me. I don't know what's wrong with John. I told her it was raining outside and she said, thanks for the news flash in a really snarky way. American informal over person words or mood sharply critical. Cutting, cutting, that's the word, cutting. Sarcastic, critical. The kid who makes snarky remarks in class. Snarky judgment. No snarky judgment. No snarky judgment. Another glaring error. Awkward word choices. Awkward word choices. Awkward word choices. A brain fart. Planted seeds of doubt. Planted seeds of doubt. Planted seeds of doubt. Far-fetched. Error-free. Give credit to, give credit to, spell checker, spell checker, spell checker, spell checker, give credit to. So those are the expressions that I remembered. Again, I know all those expressions, except a snarky. Uh, but I try to remind myself of those expressions constantly. Uh, so uh, it. You know, if we just summarize what the uh, this pro guy is trying to convey to, cross to us is that once is a mistake, but more than one is bordering on carelessness. A constant nagging question, was that error a typo or ignorance? Less than fluent English can make people think twice about doing business with you. Mistakes affect your perceived authority. Too many errors can destroy it immediately. Can destroy it immediately. Can destroy it immediately. What steps can you take? One is a mistake, but more than one is bordering on carelessness. Bordering on carelessness. A constant nagging question, was that error a typo or ignorance? Less than, less than fluent English can make people think twice about doing business with you. Mistakes affect your perceived authority. Too many errors can destroy it immediately. Too many errors can destroy it immediately. What steps can you take? What steps can you take? What steps can you take? So, uh, to summarize the article, is a holding or to answer the uh, first question, uh, is a holding non-native speakers to a higher standard than native speakers unfair? Fair. Okay, regardless of whether you are a non-native speaker or a native speaker, you need to uh, have a good working English. No typos, no ignorance, no awkward 
awkward word choices, uh, your authority, your perceived authority will be destroyed immediately if you make too many typos or mistakes. So we need to have error-free content. We need to have uh, no glaring errors in our article. Uh, if that sounds uh, too far-fetched, you're right. But uh, we, we got to be a uh, prophet in our English re uh, composition, communication, because we don't want no snarky judgment. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we need to use a good spell checker. And uh, um, what else? I'm trying to uh, answer several questions or impress my ideas by using the uh, what I've learned error free. Plant, yeah, I'm not trying to uh, plant seeds of doubt in your brain, but I'm just trying to express myself. Uh, fair or not, I try to learn English every day by reading my, you know, uh, by conducting or by doing my uh, daily English reading. Fair or not, that's what I am. Fair or not, you need to believe me. Yeah. Because I want to have error-free content read so that you can listen to me while driving, while communicating to your workplace. Nagging question, far-fetched, error-free. Yep, I want to give credit to DC Pro Guy. Yep, because I want to have a win-win situation with him by reading this article and exposing his authority all over the world. Yeah, it's not a brain fart. It's just my honest opinion. Thanks, TC Pro Guy, and thanks uh, to you, all the listeners, audiences. Bye-bye.